let him use you. That phrase is a common refrain in the black church, often lifted in a shout towards the minister of the moment. Let him use you. And by God's grace, they did. Let him use you as he used Rosa Parks, whose peaceful resistance set in motion one of the largest social movements in history, and as he used Pastor Ralph Abernathy, who soon after organized the Montgomery bus boycott, helping to bring bus segregation to an end. Let him use you as he used Dorothy Cotton and Septima Clark, who empowered a generation of voters through the Citizenship Education Program. And as he used Pastor Frederick Douglass Reese, whose work in Alabama led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act. Let him use you. As he used Dorothy Height, whose leadership in the civil rights movement for the first time gave a voice to the issues affecting African American women. As he used John Lewis, who fought tirelessly to end segregation and courageously marched from Selma to Montgomery. Let him use you. As he used Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who dedicated his life to achieving equality and justice for every American. Let him use you. They did, and history was made. And today, even now, you can almost hear them joining with that great cloud of witnesses exhorting you and me right now to let him use you. The staff at Parkland Hospital voted Dr. James Griffin as president, Parkland Medical Staff. The Dallas native is the first African American to hold the position at the county hospital. Fox 4's Sean Rabb talked with the anesthesiologist about his accomplishment and life. Your office is adorned with art. I've just been collecting art um, since uh, I graduated medical school. For more than just the art's beauty, but also the messages meshed in the mosaics. Communities and individuals try to communicate a little bit of their life circumstance through their craft. So too does Dr. James Griffin, the Dallas native who is president-elect of the Parkland Medical Staff and historic first. In 1958, until I uh, became a second grader, my parents couldn't vote. So to be elected by my peers, I think, takes on special con uh, connection and connects me back to a point where we didn't have a voice, and now you have given the voice to someone who had a different background, I think is very important. And that resonates with me with responsibility and accountability. And significance. Griffin, professor of anesthesiology at UT Southwestern and chief anesthesiologist services at Parkland, was born in 1958 in the segregated colored unit at Parkland. Even though we had the social barrier in 58, uh, Parkland still is that bridge uh, that makes it possible to, for us to overcome other barriers we have in our society. What is it you want your legacy to be here? I think, you know, we all have a responsibility to make sure that the next generation has the tools, the passions, uh, to make sure that their intellectual motivation is not left uh, in the hallway, but it actually goes into the room at the bedside of the patient. Not only passing on the practice of medicine, but like art, bringing unique experiences and backgrounds to be passed to the next generation. And that we have not only uh, a responsibility to care, uh, but it has to be in the context of socially conscious and compassionate care. That's very important. Sean Rabb, Fox 4 News. What's up, fabulous family of faith? Here's what's happening at the West. The healthcare community will conduct free health screenings today and every third Sunday of the month 
visit their table in the Northex, or stop by the healthcare room to get checked out because your health is your wealth. While we're on the subject of health, join the Women of the West for another edition of Faith and Fitness with Sister Deborah P. Haynes and certified physical trainer Ava Combs tomorrow, February the 19th, in room A209 at 6.30 p.m. All women ages 18 or over are welcome. Please wear your workout clothes and shoes because it's about to go down. They're about to work out all of those calories you picked up on Valentine's Day. The first trimester of the Howard Thurman Bible Institute theme will be called towards a greater purpose, connecting people to Christ and their calling from February the 26th to the 28th from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. nightly. For more information or to register, visit htbibleinstitute.org. Attention all youth, get ready for an incredible relaunch of the Chosen Youth Ministry, March the 3rd at 10 a.m. in G129, otherwise known as the Choir Room. Be inspired by the impactful words from our awesome youth pastor, Reverend Kiel Westbrook. This is more than just worship service. It's an experience that you don't want to miss. Bring your friends, bring your cousin and them every first and third Sunday in room G129. For more information, contact the Chosen Youth by email at chosen at friendshipwest.org. The Justice Ministry is seeking attorneys and other legal workers to partner with them and create a team to assist with legal initiatives within the FWBC Justice Ministry. If you're an attorney or you work in the legal field and you are interested, please scan the QR code or email justice at friendshipwest.org. Early voting for the March primary election will occur Tuesday, February the 20th until Friday, March the 1st. Election day is Tuesday, March the 1st. Fifth. And of course, your church home is a polling location and you can vote here during the week or after church on Sunday, February the 25th at noon. You can pick up a nonpartisan voting guide from the Connection Center in the North X. The Faith Cooperative Federal Credit Union now offers office hours on first Sundays. You can manage your account, make deposits, apply for a loan, or even pay your loan, and you can also open up an account on the first Sunday of every month. So if you're looking to explore black banking opportunities and you are a member of Friendship West, stop by the Faith Cooperative Federal Credit Union. For more information, please call 972-228-5222 or email admin at faithcfcu.com. We will cap off the month next Sunday, February 25th, with a powerful, spirit-filled Black History presentation during our worship experience. As the national theme for this year's Black History Month focuses on the power of the arts in African American culture, it is befitting that our very own Children and Youth Worship Arts Ministries will demonstrate Black excellence through the arts. So make sure that you take advantage of this beautiful experience next Sunday. And for those of you who worship in person, we ask that you wear your finest African attire as we celebrate together our people's solid and blessed culture. Let's get ready. They're coming. It's the Legends Tour. Donnie McCorkin Hezekiah Walker. Marvin Sapp. And Yolanda Adams. The Legends Tour, March 1st at Friendship West Baptist Church. Hosted by comedian Jay Lamont. Tickets available on Eventbrite. Or get yours at Friendship West Baptist Church. There are several ways to connect with all things here at Friendship West. You can stop by the Connection Center in the North X every Sunday to find out ways to get involved in ministries as well as volunteer opportunities. Or you can visit our website, friendshipwest.org. Scroll over to the Connect tab. There you will find more information about prayer, prayer requests, volunteer opportunities, as well as a list of ministries you might be interested in joining. And in the words of our senior pastor, don't wait, don't hesitate, don't vacillate. Visit friendshipwest.org. Scroll over to the Connect tab and get connected connected to the ministry that best fits your needs. Another way to stay locked in with all things Friendship West is obviously to follow us on all of our social media platforms as well as our YouTube channel. You can also stay up to date by signing up for the text alerts by simply texting FWBCINFO to the number 28950. Do it right now. Pull out your phone. Text FWBCINFO to the number 28950. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have for you for this week's edition of What's Happening at the West. But before we go, we would like to thank our visitors who who took the time to worship with us on this Sunday, and even you that's online. We know that you could have went anywhere else, but you decided to worship with us, and for that, we're grateful. And if you have a church home, we are praying for you and that ministry. But if you are church homeless, we would love for you to join us. And our pastor would love to be your pastor here at the Wild Wild West. We're large enough to serve you, but we're also small enough to love you. So in your search for a church, you can end your quest at Friendship West. Why? Because at Friendship West, we ain't got nothing but love for you. Until next time, deuces.
Good morning, Friendship West. Now I know we can do better than that. I know football season's over and you don't have a team to root for right now. But just pretend that you're in a locker room right now and somebody ask you, who are you with? I need to hear Jesus. Who are you with? Jesus. Who are you with? Jesus. Who are you with? Jesus. Let's give Jesus a great big round of applause. Because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, the team of people you see up here represents Sunday school. Anybody ever remember Sunday school? Woo, I hear some Sunday school goers in the, in the house. Praise the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to one of our team members who's going to share with you a little bit about it, and then we're going to go into prayer as we begin this morning's service. Good morning, family. Sunday school meets every Sunday morning at 8.30. I know some of y'all said, oh, Lord, that's early. Well, we meet at 8.30 in person in D106, but we have just the time for you who don't want to be here at 8.30. 7 o'clock, Tuesday evenings, online via Microsoft Teams. If you're interested in joining us on Tuesday night, just go to Watch the West, Connect, Download the Jot form and we will send you your very own personal link to join us on Tuesday night. We average between 31 and 35 people on Tuesday night and between 31 and sometimes almost 40 people on Sunday morning. So you'll be with a good group of people. The only thing missing from Sunday school is you. So we look forward to seeing you next Sunday or next Tuesday. Good morning once again, Friendship West. As we prepare to go in prayer, let you, I will ask you that you clear your hearts. And remember one thing about prayer. It's just a simple communication between you and God. And God wants to hear from you personally. So when, whatever's going on in your life, remember you can always, always call on God. So let's go to God in prayer on this morning. Gracious God Almighty, in your holy and precious name, we come to your presence and just thanking you for blessing us with another day. Another day that was not promised to us, and many are not here today, Lord God, but we know that they're in your presence because of the connection that you have with them. Lord God, we pray for our seniors, our elderly, that you watch over for them, provide for them, give them their basic needs, and even beyond. We ask you to look upon our youth and our children who are still growing up and trying to find their way. Lord God, we just ask you to get, put so much into them as they continue to grow, that they will continue to lean and depend upon you. And Lord God, we pray for the church not just friendship with, but the church throughout these last days and the many challenges that we have. We know that things are going to happen because you told us in your word from the beginning of Genesis to Revelation, we understand that things are going to happen, but we know that we have you to get us through each and every situation. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up in your name, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let every man, let every woman, let every boy, let every girl, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let's sing a good congregational hymn that's going to take you back to your mama's church. We've come this far by faith. Raise your hand if you know that. Oh, come on. Let's, let's make a congregation of one and declare why we are here today. And it's because of our faith in the Lord. Here we go. Oh, we've come this far. Yeah. See the church. Say it's been leaning. Hey. Yeah. Sing Friendship West. What's the next part? Trusting in.
back and say, oh, he's never fair. Raise your hand if that's your testimony. Somebody say, oh. I can't turn around. I need to hear your friendship West. Can we do it one more time? Give me a break with the music. Oh, church say, we've come.
the top real quick. Now put your hands together and declare that forever you will trust in the Lord. Break. Break for me. Trust. Yeah. the Lord like you know that your God is trustworthy. Come on, somebody knows that my God can be trusted. Come on, I can trust him and I can trust in him. Hey, until I die, that's good news today. Come on, give God worship today if that's your declaration. I will trust in the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. Come on, give God praise one more time for another day's, another day's journey that we are indeed glad about. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Haynes, uh, an entire family of faith known as Friendship West, we want to again welcome those of you who are visiting with us, our visitors, those who are present in the sanctuary. Praise God for you. For those of you who are joining us online, we're so delighted, amen, that you are with us as well. Do us a favor, hit that like button, hit that share button. There's a word from the Lord today that our pastor has and someone that you know needs it and you can be an agent of change today by hitting that like button and hitting the share button. We also want to remind you, encourage you to be with us next Sunday at 8.45 a.m., starting at 8.45 a.m. for our baby dedication and baptism service. Amen. We as a church have been growing. Amen. That's a good reason to shout. Amen. We have been experiencing numerical growth. And so, amen, post-pandemic, we have been celebrating infant dedications and baptism in a unique way. We want you as a part of our family of faith to be a part of this awesome and unique worship experience. We start baby dedication at 845 in the morning. We immediately go into a baptism service, and we want to invite you to be a part uh, of that awesome celebration. Again, as we welcome new life, new life in Christ, amen, new life in our church family. That's just a reason to be excited and give God praise that God continues to do what God does and add numerically, amen, to this body of Christ and to this family of faith. I want to remind you also that we are now uh, in this holy season and beginning Tuesday. Everybody say Tuesday, February 20th. Oh, you didn't get that part. February 20th, February 20th, amen, through Sunday, March 31st. Our church is going to be on a fast. Our pastor has called us on a 40-day fast. All the spiritually mature people just put their hands together and gave God praise right there for increased strength. We'll turn down our plate so that God can turn up his, amen, turn up his purpose uh, in our lives. We're on a 40-day fast beginning Tuesday, February 20th through March the 31st. We are asking all of those who can be uh, a part of that fast, amen, please join us. If you missed uh, Bible study Wednesday, I had a, a great opportunity to share with Pastor Akia Westbrook as we talked about prayer and fasting and particularly the prayer and the fast that our pastor has called us to. We want to urge you to go back, watch that, amen, Bible study. But you can also access our fasting guide at friendshipwest.org there on the homepage. You can click the fast button and get some resources to help you on this 40-day 40, uh, 40 journey. We're not all fasting from the same thing, but we are fasting for the same thing. See, a praise should just go right there. 
as you think about breakthrough and deliverance and repentance and all the things that God has got in store for you, if you can just get into his face. Y'all look at that on the way home. That's all right. Amen. As a part also of our efforts to uh, help folks to connect with Christ and their calling as we have moved into this year focused on purpose and destiny and ministry and calling. We also want to remind you of the Howard Thurman Bible Institute schedule for uh, February 26th through the 28th. We want you to connect with these vital resources, these Christian education resources that are going to help equip you with all of the tools that you need as you start out on this journey of sensing and discerning what it is that God is calling you to and where your gifts are useful and needed in the kingdom of God. Register by February 23rd and make yourself available February 26th, 27th, 28th. We start with a meal here at 6.30 p.m. Classes start at 7. We're here through, uh, through 8.30 every night. You do not want to miss this Howard Thurman Bible Institute. I also want to wish a happy birthday to our minister of music, Saul Gates, who celebrated his birthday this week. We give God praise for him, for his many gifts, for the great contribution and gift that he is, amen, to the body of Christ. Come on, give God praise for our minister of music, Saul Gates. Amen. We are also pleased uh, to have with us in worship uh, this morning uh, Sister Aisha Davis, candidate for House District 109. Uh, she's currently a member of the Texas State Board of Education, and we're super excited to have her in worship with us today. Amen. God bless you, Sister Davis, as well. I want to remind you that uh, Two Sisters Sweet Creation, where are two sisters at? I was going to go there this week. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Shout out to y'all. They're celebrating two years. They're having their second anniversary next Saturday, February 24th from, nine, from uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you are invited to stop by and join in their celebration. You need to get there before Pastor Magruder does, and that's all I'm going to say on that. Shout out to y'all, and happy anniversary. Also, want to remind you that it is early. We're in voting season, y'all, and we got to vote like our future, like our lives. I just knew Friendship West would just go to praising right there. Like the future of our children and our children's 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 children depend on the decisions that we make today. Let the church say, and we know that the, the vote was won through blood and sweat and tears, and so that means that the vote is precious, that it is sacred, and that we're going to do our civic duty. So I want to remind you that early voting starts February the 20th, Tuesday, February 20th, so you can start your fast and cast your vote. Amen. Right here at Friendship West, we are an early voting location. So February 20th all the way through March 1st, you can early vote, and then Election Day is Tuesday. Tuesday, March the 5th, 7 a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. We need you to exercise that precious, precious franchise. Amen. Again, one, one through blood and sweat and tears. We give God praise today for one of my favorite ensembles. The Kelly Corral is in the building. Come on, give God praise for them as they prepare now to come and minister to us today. Yeah. 
That's true religion. You must have your soul converted. You must have that true religion. For you can't cross there. Oh, yes, you must have that true religion. You must have your soul converted. You must have that true religion. For you can't cross there. Where have you been, good Christian? I know it all. Where have you been, been Sylvie? I've been nowhere to be
Praise God with me for the amazing Kelly Corral. What a blessing. Amen. Praise God for the legend, the icon that is Jill Kelly and for those magnificent voices that have blessed us on this day. I want to do this right quick. Where is uh, Waylon Wallace? Deacon Waylon Wallace, are you in the house? Deacon Waylon Wallace. Deacon Wallace is, of course, the leader. There you go, Deacon. Deacon Wallace is the leader of our wonderful Deacon's Ministry. And this week, he was honored as one of our history makers, educator extraordinaire, just an amazing, good man, good heart, doing great things. God bless you, Deacon. So proud of you. And we praise God for greatness in our midst. Uh, that just always blesses me uh, in a very powerful way. Don't forget to get your tickets for that big phenomenal concert that is coming up March 1st. March 1st. Folk are coming from all over to come to this concert on March 1st. So please don't forget uh, March 1st, but get your tickets right now. My frat brother's texting me this morning. How can I get tickets? So please, please, they don't even go here. They come in here. So make sure uh, that you get your tickets. I want to call your attention now to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 3. There in the third chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at verse 11, we find the words of our text for this message, Exodus chapter 3 beginning at verse 11. Uh, all year long, we are addressing what it means to be called to a higher purpose. Because if you are a child of God, you're not born by accident. You're born with an assignment. God has a plan for your life. There is a calling on your life. Please don't miss this. 
callings are not confined to clergy. There's a calling on your life, even if it's not to preach. There's a call. Preaching is one calling. It ain't the only calling. And so that's why Paul, in the text we addressed last month, in Ephesians 4, verse 1 says, I want you to walk worthy of the vocation, of the calling that is upon your life. And so, so that's what we're dealing with this year. And this month, we're taking a look at Moses and his own calling. And I want to go ahead and lift up here in Exodus chapter 3, verses 11 through 15, from the New Living Translation of the 11th century vowed Hebrew text. It reads, but Moses protested to God, who am I? to appear before Pharaoh. Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested. If you go, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Verse 11 begins, but Moses. Verse 13 begins, but Moses. For just a few moments with your prayers, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, get your butt out of here. Get your butt out of here. You may be seated in God's presence. Get your butt, B-U-T, out of here. Get your butt out of here. It's impossible to soar to the skies and fly if you don't recognize your wings. I've also discovered that in this thing called life, which is a fight, you can be defeated before the fight begins because you see yourself as a loser. In a real sense, I'm suggesting that maybe we should take a fresh look at Lauren Hill's insight when she raises the question, how you gonna win if you ain't right within? I'm suggesting, my sisters and brothers, that life from without can beat you down within to the point that you feel like you don't have what it takes to stand up. This past week, I flew from Dallas to Philly, Philly to Dallas, and when I went to Philly, I went there to commence the the Salt Lake March, the march, the pilgrimage for peace from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. And interestingly enough, when I boarded the flight coming back to Dallas, I was tripping because seated next to me was a brother who was dressed in a in pilot's attire. It's evident that, that he's a pilot. And so normally, though I'm not engaging in speaking to folk on the plane, I wanted to find out why he was sitting next to me and not in the cockpit. And so I sarcastically said, why aren't you up there instead of sitting back here with me? And that's when he said, I'm on my way to Dallas to get with my flight crew. He then looks at me and says, I I know you. I said, yeah, I'm Denzel. He said, quit playing, Pastor Haynes. And then my sisters and brothers, he proceeded to share with me a powerful testimony that literally blew my mind. It was so powerful, I had to download it on my mental computer. And now I want to sermonically print y'all a copy. Check out what this pilot for American Air.
airline shared with me by way of his testimony. Listen, he is a pilot now, but he said for decades he was deathly afraid to fly. Don't miss it. He's a pilot now, but for a long time he was afraid to fly. His testimony goes something like this. When he was nine or ten years old, watching cartoons, he saw one of his favorite cartoon characters with a cape fly. He made up his mind to get, watch this, a towel from his mother's uh, area where she she kept the linen and when she got when he got the towel he wrapped a part of it around his neck and then went to the top of the staircase and decided that he would fly well you already know that did not turn out well he broke his arm and then he showed me don't miss this the scar on top of his for the scar on the right side of his forehead as a constant reminder of his failed attempt to mimic a cartoon character and attempt to fly. And then my sisters and brothers, he shared with me that for quite some time he had the pain of a, a broken arm. He said that was not his only attempt at flying. His second attempt was his very first flight with his dad. He and his dad were going to meet his grandmother, his father's mother in another part of the country and when they boarded the flight it's his first flight ever he gets on the plane and looks forward to soaring he says I can't fly by myself but the plane can take me where we are going the plane took off immediately it is hit by turbulence the turbulence was so bad that it jarred him out of his seat he hit his head on the front of the on the back of the seat that was in front of him and he then pointed to me on the left side of his forehead another scar reminiscent of the treacherous turbulence that had jarred him in the midst of a flight going to their destination at that moment he said he was afraid to fly he concluded that he was to live life grounded my sisters and brothers here is what what happened fast forward some years later he discovers that his dad on a business trip in London he is a young adult now his dad is on a business trip in London his mother is out of town taking care of her mother when word comes to him that his dad has been stricken had a stroke right there in London while on a business trip check this his testimony is he called his mother to let his mother know that she needed to go to London in order to see about and bring her his dad back home his mother said son I need you now because my mother is struggling I can't leave her bedside right now I need you to get on a plane go see about your father and bring your father home he said he was petrified because of what had happened in the past he said that he refused and said to his mother well the only way I can go see about dad is if they have a cruise that will take me from where I am to London where dad is he said mama did not find it funny and said you better get your you know what on the plane and go see about your dad check this my sisters and brothers he testified in that very moment that he had a decision to make he was at a crossroads but his own insecurity anxiety and fear was causing him to get in the way of what was was needed to be done don't miss this he was called by his mother to take a journey from where he was a long journey that would cross the Atlantic Ocean to get to London to see about his father but he felt it was too much for him why was it too much for him because something had happened back then that had incarcerated him in insecurity right 
right now. I park here parenthetically because already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid, called out your flavor. Something happened back then that has incarcerated you in insecurity right now. Y'all didn't get that. I'll keep it moving. Not only that, but note with me that he still bore on his forehead scars that were letting him know what had happened in the past that was making him a prisoner in the present. And who am I talking to? Not your visible scars, but those invisible scars that, that reminds you of what happened, that reminds you of what you cannot do because of what happened back then. But hold on, what really gets me as I unpack this further is the fact that his own relationships were now be paying a price for his own issues. I didn't say that right. His relationship with his dad, his relationship with his mom was paying for, paying the price for his own internal issues. That's what I'm trying to say because insecurity will make your relationships pay a price that really it can't afford to pray. It can't afford to pay. Check this. If you are insecure, it simply means, watch this, that your own internal brokenness will make it almost impossible for you to engage in a whole relationship with someone else. It's what's in you that gets in the way of you having a healed whole relationship with someone else. And so sometimes you've got to check you before you wreck others around you. Preach, Freddie. I'm already there. Understand, my sisters and brothers, that this brother is sharing with me that what had happened to him had given him a fear of flying. Imagine that. He said he developed a fear of heights, and God sent me to talk to somebody today. I don't know you, but already I'm in your Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor, and if you're honest with yourself, there is a fear of heights. There is a, here it is, an incarceration, an insecurity that is precluding you from fulfilling your divine possibilities. And if you think I'm just making this up with metaphors, ask my man Moses, Moses, the mighty mountain man, Moses, my sisters and brothers who eventually became the legendary liberator, lawgiver, and leader of the fledgling faith community. I'm talking about Moses. Moses, my sisters and brothers who was born to have a date with destiny and the book lets us know. Please don't miss your shout right here that Moses now finds himself on the backside of the desert. Wait, he had gone from being a pampered prince in the palace to being a shepherd who settled for kicking it with sheep. I gotta hang out right there because Moses had big plans that God had already put his name on, but now because of what had happened in the past, what happened in the past, you recall, I believe it's chapter 2, Moses tries to defend one of his fellow Hebrews. I love it because Moses is in the palace but has not forgotten who he is. Moses is in the palace but has not forgotten where he came from. Moses has reached great heights but he has not forgotten those who were stuck at the bottom I gotta stop right there because this particular election season I'm mighty concerned and I'm concerned because we got folk who don't mind rising high but then they get bought off and paid for and they forget where they came from I'm watching it my sisters and brothers because just yesterday it was shared with me this particular list of people who are running for office on the Democratic side and this coalition of concerned clergy. I ain't never heard of them, but I discovered they are bought and paid for by one of the Democratic operatives. And what bothers me is they sell so cheaply. What bothers me is that they sell our community so cheaply. Y'all didn't get that, so I'll help you out right now. One of the reasons you don't hear me talking about candidates from the pulpit unless I meet with
with them first is because I'm going to be a good steward of, your, of, of my influence. What does that mean? If I have not met with them, not to get paid by them, but if I have not met with them to share our vision of what we want our community, our state and nation to look like, I'm not going to mess up my influence and give their names to you because that ain't right now. Check out how cheap we can get bought and paid for. One of the names who was on this slate card that was given out a few years ago asked me to participate in a get out the vote on Sunday, a soul to the polls. Check out what happened, Pastor Magruder. I did. And do you know the next day he said there's an envelope for you over at your reception desk. I said, what's that for? He said, just go get it. I got the envelope, opened it up. It was a thousand dollars in cash. I said, come get it because you have tried, you, you think I'm for sale. And what you don't understand is the only way you can pay me for our people is to give me enough money to buy Manhattan, to buy Hawaii, and give me plane fare so I can bring all of my people with me because that's the only way I'm going. A thousand dollars, that's an insult. Come get your thousand dollars. I don't need your thousand dollars. I'm trying to say if we don't develop a we complex and get delivered from a me complex, we will never get to the promised land. Preach, Freddie Haynes, I am. I know y'all don't like that, but I got to tell it like a T.I. is. Watch this. Moses doesn't forget where he came from. And though he's in the palace, he defends his people against an Egyptian overseer. The book says the next day that Moses sees them fighting amongst themselves and it trips them out. Why y'all fighting amongst yourselves? You're already being oppressed by the empire. Why would you fight among yourselves as if you don't know who the real enemy is? Why would you fight among yourselves as if you don't know that the real enemy ain't the one that looks like you. It's the one that's trying to hold you back and keep you down. I'm tired of black folk fighting black folk. I'm tired of black men fighting black women. I'm tired of us turning on each other instead of to each other. Wait, my sisters and brothers, Moses has done that. And Stephen in Acts chapter 7 interprets that Moses thought that the people understood that God was using him to liberate them from Egyptian enslavement. Watch it. The text lets us know that when Moses does that, they then turn on him. Moses runs into the wilderness. He's a fugitive from justice. And when he gets there, he defends some women who are turn out to be the daughters of Jethro against some treacherous thieves. I like it because Moses is still using his power Power and privilege on behalf of those who may not have it. I love it. The text says he now settles down and for 40 years he's a shepherd of sheep after being a pampered prince in the palace. And then 40 years later, here comes God. And God meets Moses on the backside of the desert in a bush that was burning but not burning up. And the text lets us know that out of that, out of that bush, a voice came, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Moses says, yo, what's up, God? God says, I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and all of his women. I have seen the affliction of my people. I've heard the hell they're going through, and I've come down to deliver them. Watch this. Remix it, Freddie Haynes. God is saying, because I am woke, I want all the smoke. I like that right there. God is woke to what's happening, and God says, I'm woke to the system of enslavement. I'm woke to oppression. I'm woke to what's happening with our people. I want to say to DeSantis right now, and all of this kind, God is woke. So if you're trying to ban wokeness, you're trying to ban God. God is woke. The Bible lets us know God says, 
says when you woke, you want all the smoke. And not only is God woke wanting all the smoke, but God says, I am preparing y'all for a promised land. I want you to imagine new possibilities in spite of your present predicament. I've come down to deliver them. Now you are going, but then the text blows my mind. It says in verse 11, but Moses. Verse 13, but Moses. Wait, wait, wait. God said, I want all the smoke. I'm coming down. I'm sending you, but Moses. But Moses. But the conjunction, we know the function. It's an adversative that basically overrules what's before the but. And so when God says, I've come down and I'm sending you, the text says, but Moses. When God responds to Moses' concerns and insecurities, verse 13, it says, but Moses, which means that Moses, watch this, allows his butt to get in the way of God's will. And when his butt got in the way of God's will, what was his butt? His butt came from his insecurity. His butt came from his fear. His butt came from his anxiety. His butt came from his inner issues. His butt came from his low self-esteem. I want to park right here and raise the question to everybody in the house, what is your butt? Because I don't care who you are, how big your Bible is, how long you've been coming to church, what is your butt? Are you doing the butt? Because if you're doing the butt, if you're not careful, y'all are so slow. I guess y'all don't recall the butt. But, but sometimes we don't get to where God is taking us because we're so busy doing the but, and when you end up doing the but, you miss out on what God is up to and wants to accomplish through you in this thing called life. What is your but? Is it insecurity? What is your but? Is it low self-esteem? What is your but? Anxiety? What is your but? You feel like Moses that you are not enough. Look at the text. Moses says, who am I that I should deliver your people? Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh. Moses has a big old butt that is in the way of what God is trying to do through him. And God wants to talk to somebody right now because God has a calling on your life, but your butt is in the way. And God says it's time to get your butt out of here. And let me just say, I get it. I understand. Because when you truly recognize what God wants to do through you and with you and how huge it is and much bigger than you and you start looking at you, you'll feel like a teaspoon that is called to drain the ocean. I feel that way sometimes. I feel like I'm not enough. And God says, it ain't about you being enough, it's about we being enough. Because you plus me equals a majority. And once I get in your life, whatever I've called you to do, I equip you to do. Whatever I call you to do, I set life up for you to get it done. Whatever I've called you to do, ain't no devil in hell going to stop you from accomplishing it. Because I bless you with the power to get Get your butt out of here. Man, that was so good. So let me just see if I can unpack what it means to get your butt out of here. When you get your butt out of here, the text lets us know. I love verse 11. But Moses says, uh, God, who am I that I should deliver and go face Pharaoh? And God says, I'll be with you. But Moses is met with God saying, I got you. <sighs> okay. But Moses, God says, I got you. Uh, uh, here it is, here it is. This is a shout. But Moses means, or, or, or God saying, I got you, means that you are going to be, oh, I love this, fortified by divine presence 
that gives both purpose and prolepsis. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to break this thing down, man, because this is, this is just too good. You're fortified by divine presence because God says, Moses, you feel like you ain't enough? Cool. I'm with you. Uh, and, and this is going to be the sign that I sent you. The sign that I sent you is you're going to come back here and worship God at this mountain. Okay, okay, all right. I'm, 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 I'm going to break it down. Here it is. Moses, uh, uh, I'm with you. I got you. This is the sign that you're going to have that I'm with, that I sent you. You're going to come back here and worship God at this mountain. Now, I'm going to unpack this real quick. He says, Moses, I'm with you. Now, that's enough right there. When God says, I'm with you, that, that's really all you need because if God is for you, who can be against you? God could have stopped right there and said, I'm with you because when God is with you, Isaiah puts it like this. When you pass through the fire, I'm with you. When you go through the flood, I, I'm with you. You won't get burned because I'm with you. There's something about the witness of God that lets me know as long as God is with me, God plus me means I can be enough. That that means I may not see myself as enough, but because I know God is more than enough, the good news is if God is with me, I'm going to be all right. And so Moses, here it is. I'm with you. That's enough. Wait, but God adds something. This is a sign that I sent you. Uh-oh, this is good. The word sent in the Hebrew also was used for sowing seed okay this is the sign that I am sowing you because when God calls you when God has a plan purpose for your life you are seed like every seed has a calling the calling of the seed is within the seed but seed, seed, will you talk to these folk for just a while? I talked to a seed earlier this week, and the seed said, Freddie, let me testify at this point. Can I give you the seed's testimony? The seed said, I started out real small, and then the next thing I know, I'm thrown in dirt that overwhelmed me, and I thought the dirt was going to get the best of me, but, but God had placed something in me that the dirt brought out of me. So yeah, I got in some mess. I got in some dirt but the good news is the dirt didn't have the last word the dirt that was much bigger than me was bringing out of me what God had already placed in me just because God has called you it doesn't mean life won't get messy just because God has called you it doesn't mean folk won't throw dirt at you but isn't it good to know when they throw dirt at you they don't know the seed that you are and when you are a seed it means the dirt works on your behalf watch this watch this watch this Victoria Monet Victoria Monet uh, uh, when they did the VMAs VMAs told her she wasn't big enough to perform prime time I like when folk tell me what I ain't because when they tell me what I ain't I got God's am reminding me of whose I am Oh, that was good right there. Can I do that thing one more time? Whenever someone tells you what you ain't and what you can't, that's when you remember who God is. And when you know who God is, God's amness and isness then reinforces who you are. Victoria Monet gets rejected by the VMAs. Oh, hallelujah. But then she's up for a Grammy. Oh, y'all didn't see it? Okay. Victoria Monet right, right. on my mama, right. on my hood. Uh -huh. I look fly. Uh -huh. I look, okay, okay, because y'all playing real holy on me right now. Don't do that to me, okay? So Victoria Monet, her song wins. She gets up to testify. And when she gets up, there's my God. When she gets up to testify, here's what Monet does. Victoria Monet says, Hear her testimony. It got me. She said, I came to LA 14 years ago. 14 years ago. She's just now winning. 
14 years ago. Wait, wait, for a new artist. She's just, she's been there 14 years, but, but she's just now winning for new artist. She says, for 14 years, I felt like L.A. was like dirt. But I decided that it, I was going to transform the dirt into soil. And when I transform the dirt into soil, I absorb the nutrients from the soil. I absorb the stuff from the soil that would let me blossom. So sometimes you got to be on hold in dirt for quite some time. But the dirt ain't going to have the last word. God is going to have the last word because God has sent you. God is sowing you. Okay, that didn't get you. Watch this, watch this. This, this, this is the sign I sent you. You're going to come worship God at this mountain. Uh, the people, listen, God is speaking in the present tense as if it's the past tense. God is saying, I know it's already done. And so since it's already done, I'm the God who is in tomorrow but was in yesterday. And I'm here with you today. And since I'm in tomorrow and here with you today, but I was there yesterday, I'm going to speak about tomorrow as if it's today and then make it seem like yesterday. I'm speaking things as they are as though they are not because I'm God like that and y'all all I'm trying to say when you know God for yourself it's already done and when you know God for yourself God not only sows you with seed but God is operating in the future tense even as you're moving through the present tense so get over your insecurity from your past tense What? What? That was fire right there. Uh, 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 how do I do that? How do I do that? Uh, I guess I'll give it to you like this. Uh, Dean John Kenney, Dean Emeritus of Samuel Wood Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University, loves his grandkids. And he was testifying about his grandson and how they were watching a movie. And during the movie, the hero became embroiled in a mess, and it looked like the hero was going to die. And Dean Kenny says he grabbed his grandson. I hope he makes it out. His grandson said, that, Granddaddy, don't worry. I've already seen this. I know how it turns out. This is what is about to happen. And once that happens, he's going to break through. So I'm not even tripping right now because I know how it's going to turn out because I've already seen this movie before. Y'all, I want to stop right here and let you know I've already seen this thing before. The Bible puts it like this. I've seen it before. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to God's purposes. I've seen this thing before. Weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning I've seen this thing is there anybody here who knows God already has this thing worked out wait 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 I'm fortified uh, by the divine presence that is purposeful and proleptic oh that's why y'all didn't shout because proleptic through you that's a big word huh I like it it's used especially in the legal area. In the legal area, you anticipate, or in debating, you anticipate what someone is going to ask or someone is going to say. And so you address what you know they're going to say or do before they get a chance to do it. It's called prolepsis. And I'm simply trying to say God is already anticipating what is about to happen. God is already anticipating what's about to go down. So with that being the case, after I'm fortified by divine presence, I am then, here's your shout right here fueled by a divine revelation of who God is and what God means to me. Text says, but Moses said, when I go out, tell the people God sent me, they're going to ask me what your name is. So what do I tell them? God said, tell them I am that I am. Oh my God, y'all didn't shout. Uh, 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 here it is, here it is. Moses is now fueled by a divine revelation that is 
uh oh, designed to make us unstoppable. People are gonna ask you, what's your name? Tell them I am that I am. What does God's amness have to do with my assignment? Are you with me? Because God's amness shows up in my assignment in that the I am that I am is not simply a name, it's a title of what God does. In the Hebrew, it really comes from the verb to be. It means that God, and that's why some scholars say that God was saying, I will be who I will be, or I will cause to be what I will cause to be, because God is in the causation business so that scholars call God, the uncaused cause, the unmoved mover. And since God causes to be, it means God is saying, Moses, tell him the one that causes to be is the one who is sending you. And since I cause to be always eternally in the present tense, you can tell him I am sent you. I am the one that causes to be. I am the one that brings newness into old jacked up situations I am that I am okay all right I make it plain there's something about connecting with God and receiving that revelation that makes you unstoppable why because the bottom line is barriers are gonna rise the bottom line is haters are gonna try to hinder the bottom line is circumstances are going to try to circumscribe. But once you are fueled by a divine revelation of the amnesty of God, it makes you, here it is, unstoppable so that Nas can write. I love it. My African skin gave me passion to win. He's saying I am unstoppable. Jay-Z, the husband of Beyonce, could throw down like this and simply put it. I like the rap when he says they came to see the uh, they, they came to see the ashes from uh, they came to see they came to see us sinking like the Titanic instead we rose from the ashes like a phoenix I think that's what I'm trying to get to because he said they came to watch me drown instead they have to watch me rise there's something uh, unstoppable about us well y'all ain't feeling hip-hop let me give you a holy Bible the Bible puts it like this David is going to the front lines because Goliath is making fun of God's people. David says, I'm a handle up on you. Goliath laughs at him. David says, you come at me with sword and shield. I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord of hosts because David said, I am unstoppable. Y'all still didn't shout. Paul is in prison, but he writes to Philippian church and says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Y'all didn't shout. He's in prison, but says prison does not preclude my possibilities. He's in prison, but says you can't lock up my purpose. You can't lock up my God's power. You can lock me up, but you can't lock up what God has designed for me to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm trying to tell somebody when you know God for yourself, you become unstoppable. Man, that didn't get y'all. You unstoppable. Yes, you are. When you get connected with God's amnesty, you unstoppable. I hope that's your word right there. You're unstoppable. No boss can block you. You are unstoppable. Adversity can't attack you. You are unstoppable. Circumstances can't circumscribe you. You are unstoppable. Disappointment can't block you from your divine appointment. You are unstoppable. Enemies cannot wipe you out. They set you up. You are unstoppable. Frustration can't stop you. 
because God will set you free in the midst of what tries to frustrate you. You are unstoppable. I'm trying to let you know guilt from your past can't get in the way of the grace that will propel you to a brand new future. You are unstoppable. You are having an unstoppable witness in the house who can testify now under him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or imagine I am unstoppable here it is I'm done text says we're fortified we're fueled but we got to have some flashbacks I'm done text says this I'm gonna shout up out of here because the text says God keeps on talking tell him I am sent you and then to let him know I'm the God of your ancestors Abraham Isaac Jacob okay so y'all didn't shout let me let me give this to y'all because maybe you think I'm remixing this and as a consequence you're not really feeling what this text says because this is really shout worthy it says this it says this God replied to Moses I am who I am say this people of Israel I am and sent me to you God also said to Moses say this to the people of Israel Yahweh the God of your ancestors the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you ah oh, great African poet put it like this minute by minute hour by hour if you lose your history you lose your power oh is that why they why they trying to rewrite black history is that why they're trying to get rid of diversity equity and inclusion because they don't want us to know our power because gray car is right we see the future through the past it's a Sankofa experience where the Sankofa symbol, the bird, is looking back in order to move forward with an egg in its beak. It's pulled from within itself. And that Sankofa moment simply means that I can move forward because I know the power of looking backward. We see the future through the past. No wonder they've always come up with American mythology and it, and it, it makes us feel excluded, second class citizens. But oh, when you get to know the past for yourself and recognize it long before Columbus got lost and Copernicus had a telescope, the Dogen people of Africa scientifically looked up and beheld the constellation of the stars. And Greg Carr says at one time some European scholars went to see the Dogen people who were scientists and they saw them dancing. And as they were dancing, the European scientists said, what are you doing? They're saying we are mimicking the constellation of the stars. And that's when they said, but you can't see the stars, but we can feel the stars. And they kept on dancing. And y'all, all of a sudden, the European scholars discovered that they were actually moving in concert with the star, the star they had seen through the telescope. And that's when they said, how do you know there's a star up there that you have not seen? They were dancing to something they had not seen. Y'all don't seem to understand when you look at the future through the past you'll recognize the earliest calculator was found on the continent of Africa. When you look at the future through the past you discover we discovered the number pi. We built the great pyramids. We understood monotheism and the importance of having one God. You got to look at the future through our past. Our past didn't start in slavery. Our past started on a great continent that was the cradle of civilization. Look at the future through the past. All right. So he says, I'm the God of Abraham. That should have made Moses feel good because Moses is 80 and God is calling him to something new at 80. Okay. I'm the God of Abraham 
Abraham before Viagra. He and Mama Sarah are dead. But God calls them, and when God calls them, God brings new life out of dead bodies. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac who can take you from trauma to triumph. Have you thought about the fact that Isaac had to be traumatized? We, we, read, we read, what is it, Genesis 22 from the Abraham perspective. Where, where God tells them, go take your son up to Mount Moriah and kill him. And, and he takes Isaac up to Mount Moriah, ties him up on an altar, gets ready to kill him until God says, Abraham, there's a ram in the bush. You know how traumatizing that had to be? To get tied up by your daddy? You know how traumatizing that had to have been to know that your daddy was about to kill you until God spoke and stopped that from happening. But God is so good. God is able. Here's your shout right here. When you find yourself traumatized, God can take you from trauma to triumph. And Isaac gives birth to the future. And the next thing you know, here comes Jacob, which simply means I don't care how much you mess up, God ain't giving up on you. Because Jacob was a high mess. Jacob was a trickster, slick, scheming, conniving, but God did not give up on Jacob. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't know what category you in, but God says I'm the God of whatever situation you find yourself in. I'm done. I'm done. Because I know what's happening, and I feel you. You're saying, okay, but, but, but pastor, what about that pilot sitting next to you? on the plane who was scared of heights. And you've been sitting here the whole sermon wondering, but hold on, he's, he's on the plane. He's a pilot who had been afraid of heights. So really, that's all the information you needed is to know that he's on the plane He's a pilot. Now, you may not know how he got there, but you know he's there. And some folks seated next to you, they don't know how you got here, but the fact is you're here, and they don't know what you've been through to get here, but here you are in spite of all that you've been through. Some of us can testify if the person next to you or the folk around you knew what you had been through, they'd start breaking out shouting just knowing that you showed up in church today because you don't know like I know. Here it is. Here it is. This is what you want. I got to give it to you. Here it is. I'm done. Here it is. Here's what he, tell, he told me. He said, he said, Pastor Haynes, do you know that when my mama told me that, that I better get on that plane, she then told me, she said, son, I've bought your ticket. Go claim your seat. Fasten your seatbelt. Trust the pilot and bring your daddy home. Right. 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 I'm going to do it one more time because that, that, that's the word right, right there. She said, I've already paid for your ticket. Right. It's paid for. Right. So all you got to do is claim what's paid for. Yeah. Fasten your seatbelt. Yeah. Trust the pilot. Right. I'm going to do it one more time because it's your shout. It's already paid for. Yeah. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Y'all didn't shout. Here it is. He was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. Here's your shout right here. He said, I got on that plane. And when I got on that plane, I remembered mama's words. I'm there because I've been paid for. And that's the word somebody needs to hear. You've been paid for. That's the word you need to know. You've been paid for. I fastened my seatbelt to trust the pilot. And then the pilot came over the PA system and said, this is your captain speaking. I could shout you right there, but I got to keep it moving. He says, today represents my 25th anniversary of flying as a pilot. And that's when the co-pilot came on, Pastor Haynes. And the co-pilot said, our pilot, our captain is 
too modest because our captain has been flying a commercial 25 years but before that he flew missions for the Air Force of the United States or of the United States Air Force and so he's been flying a, a lot longer than that and then uh, that's when the captain said well, I just wanted y'all to know we're about to fly through some turbulence but I got 25 years plus of doing this so just fasten your seat belt stay in your seat and I promise you we'll get where you're going I, I'm done there's your word right there God says you've been paid for at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight now I'm happy all the day the blood still works so if you fasten your seatbelt this is your captain speaking all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to God's purposes this is your captain speaking be anxious for nothing but by everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus this is your captain speaking cast your cares on God God cares for you this is your captain speaking delight yourself in the Lord he'll give you the desires of your heart this is your captain speaking even the youth shall faint and get weary young folks shall fall but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary walk and not faint this is your captain speaking God is our refuge and strength a very present help in the time of trouble this is your captain speaking fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall soon soon oh soon get cut down and wither like the green grass this is your captain speaking can't nobody do it like jesus can't nobody do it like the lord this is your captain speaking the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid this is get your butt out of here your captain is speaking Listen. Listen. take off yeah you're gonna have some turbulence but you got a good captain and your captain has a good track record listen every head bowed every eye closed Christians please pray listen you've come to church you know good and well you're not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ that's you God loves you. God has plans for your life. You're saying, well, I didn't quite make it to church, but I'm online. God loves you. God has plans for your life. 
Listen, it's time to take off. It's time to soar. All of us have our insecurities. All of us battle with our self-image. All of us do that. But listen, God made you. God has plans for your life. God made you, and God didn't make a mistake when God made you. And so, here's the deal. Don't you know it's time to get your life straight with God? If that's what you want to do, if you're online, dial that number, 469-498-0210. You can hit that. Join us at friendshipwest.org. You can email us, and we'll respond. Today can be a new beginning, new life. The God who calls this to be will make you unstoppable. So if you're here in the house and you're not saved, you're here in the house and you know it's time to get your life straight with God. I want you right now, my sister, my brother, man, girl, boy, woman, however you self-identify, just know you're welcome and wanted here in God's family. And so if you're here and you're not saved, you're here and you know you're not spiritually connected to the God who made you. It ain't no accident you're here. God planned it. What do you have to do? It's, it's simple. Stand up. Step out of the aisle you're in. Come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here and you know it's time to say yes to the Lord, come on right now. Give your life to Christ. I have counselors, ministers down front who are waiting on you. They're going to minister to you in a private area. Today, you can leave here connected to Jesus Christ. You can leave here connected to God. Bless your heart. I see you coming. I'm so glad they're coming. You know why? Because maybe you were seated there waiting and wondering, is this the right time? And God touched my man right there to come on down. And maybe that's all you needed. So you need to know right now is the right time. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Let's get connected to Jesus Christ. Come on. Let's get connected to the God who can make you unstoppable. Let's get to connected to the God who can fortify you and build you up and make you what God wants you to be in spite of being broken on the inside. If you're here and you're not saved, you're here, not connected to Christ, stand up, step out, come on down, and give your life to Jesus Christ. Preacher, well, here's my deal. I got that part right, but in all honesty, I feel God leading me to join church. I'd like to join church. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. So won't you right now stand up, step out, come on down. Today's a mighty good day to join church. Come on, do it right now. Preacher, I used to go to church. I stopped going. I'm ready to get back in church. Come on, stand up, step out, come on down, and let's get back in church preacher this is my deal in all honesty i just moved to dallas fort worth from another area i got a church home back there i live here work here go to school here i want a church home here that you stand up step out come on down and let's join church whatever your category is here it is if you're here and you're ready to give your life to christ you're here you're ready to join church we're getting ready to stand when we stand that is your signal stand up step out come on down give your life to jesus Christ, let's do it. Shall we stand and won't you come right now? convinced God is waiting on you. 
God won't even let me stop this invitation because you wrestling with God and you know who you are. You wrestling, you going back and forth, wrestling with God. Let me just say this. If you're wrestling with God, make sure you lose because that's the only way you're going to win, saying yes to God. And I know you got some real good excuses in your head to why you ought to stay where you are and not do what you feel God leading you to do. They sound real good, I know, because the Bible says the devil disguises himself as an angel of light. The devil will get in your head will get in your head and give you some good sounding reasons for why you ought not come on down. Listen, God is also talking. That's that inner impulse saying, yeah, go up there. Listen, God is speaking. And since God is speaking, that's what you ought to respond to, the voice of Almighty God. So here it is. We're going to help you. I need everyone, please whisper this prayer. Lord, use me. When I give the signal, find out your neighbor's names all around you, front, back, right, left. Once you get their names, look at them, smile. Don't scare them. After you smile, say their name. Ask them three, three questions. Are you saved? You got a church home where you were growing and active? One more question. Are you sure? I hope you ain't lying in church. If they say yes to every question, give them a fist bump. Celebrate how good God is to both of you. If they say anything but yes, say, see, that's why God put you next to me. You ain't got to walk by yourself. I got you. And then bring them down. Y'all ready? Let's go. Let God use you right now. What's your name? Say their name. Are you saved? Do you have a church on? So glad to have you. Shall we pray, God, thank you for new life in Christ, for what you are up to in the lives of these, your children. Please fill them with your spirit. Order their steps in your word. Use us to build them up so they become all that you would have them to. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Please go with our, oh man, that's what's up. That's what's up. Welcome home. You're the one I was waiting on. Bless your heart. amazing so amazing God is so good all right listen one more time let's praise God for our new family all right be seated right quick we're getting ready to go a few things number one it's offering time it's offering time come on come on let's praise God knowing how generously good God is 
please now prepare to give in a way that honors God and is obedient. We got somebody else coming. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. That is so amazing. God bless you. They're coming for you. We, oh, they still coming. Man, God is something else. I love you. Welcome, 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 welcome. I love this. Check this out. I uh, hope she don't mind me doing this. So yesterday, one of these days is where I was talking to my mother. My mother said, son, uh, how are we doing financially at the church? So that was a strange question. She don't ever ask me how we doing financially. And so uh, I said, I guess we're doing okay. Well, I want us to be doing more than okay. Uh, so, so my mother says she wants us to be doing more than okay. So that means we need y'all. Mama said we need to do more, okay? So please, let's give in a way that honors God. Let's give in a way that is obedient to God's word. God said, bring the whole tithe into God's storehouse. Given it shall be given unto you. Don't get in the way of what God has for you. Open up your heart and hands and then watch God do what only God can do. Please now, let's prepare to give. You can give these ways. Text 972-200-9419. Uh, text FWBC to that number. You, there's a Givelify app. You can give online. Church app as well as the website, and there's the QR code code you can scan, or of course you can give through the old school envelope. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for the privilege of giving. Please bless these gifts through them. May your church impact the world, save souls, make a difference. In Jesus' name, bless gift and giver for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be in prayer tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll be in Judge Aisha Redmond's court uh, for our case. They did a wonderful story on what we're trying to do in the Dallas Morning News this week. And so we are fighting for our community, for our health, for our future. So please keep us in your prayers. If you can come, that would be a beautiful thing, but please keep us in your prayers. Now, you know, I love you. I love fellowshipping with you after church, especially our guest. I normally speak to people in the back after church. I'm supposed to be on a plane in about an hour, and so I got to go. Uh, and I didn't know I'd be the only preacher left here, and so uh, I'm the only preacher left. So what I'm going to do is jet as I give the benediction, because I'm speaking in Palm Springs, California at 3 o'clock, and then I'm catching a red eye for 9 o'clock, all right? So I'm saying the benediction. It's a moving benediction, okay? <laughs> Shall we stand? Receive God's benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you, grant you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit. And every time butt shows up, you better get your butt out of here in Jesus' name. Peace. That was fire, and we're fired up that you were here for it. You know what would be hot? You're checking out at Friendship West so that you can like, share, or subscribe us on social media. It helps more than you'll know. And also, please go to www.friendshipwest.org and find out even more about this powerful Christian movement. You'll feel all warm inside to see how your prayers, your offerings or monetary gifts, and your investment of volunteer time can help make a difference with this difference-making ministry. For all who were here as visitors, you can share you were here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. If you're fired up about joining our family of faith, don't fight the spirit. Instead, call now. 469-498-0210 or email join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, it will be lit to hear from you.